Captain's Log Supplemental. We're about to release a new technology onto the internet so that it may grow and flourish and maybe take root. It's hard to say. KVM Frame Relay could change everything or it could be just another blip on the radar. I can't say. <laughs> Allow me to introduce Looking Glass. It's not every day I get to introduce a new technology, although I guess the pedantic among you would say that it's not really new technology, but it kind of is. I mean, honestly it is, and it's very exciting. Looking Glass is a piece of software that will help you copy the frame buffer from a Windows guest to a Linux host. That means that you can see what you see on your Windows guest on your Linux host in a window. We're running Fedora 26, I think, on this, this is hooked up to our um, host operating system. We have a virtual machine running Windows with IOMMU pass-through. This GTX 1080 Ti is passed through to our Windows guest. This ultra-wide display is hooked up to our Windows guest. This window is coming from our Windows guest, and the way that it's doing that is through the Looking Glass software, which creates a shared memory buffer between the host and guest operating system. And through that shared memory buffer, the two video cards are uh, doing frame buffer stuff with that shared buffer. So the, the guest video card, as soon as a frame is done, that frame is copied into that frame buffer. And almost in real time, that frame buffer is being displayed by the host operating system. So the latency is extremely low, as opposed to you know, something like some kind of streaming technology or remote desktop or anything like that. No, it has none of the overhead of that. The overhead of this is literally just the memory to memory copy plus whatever we have to deal with in the driver stack, which we found was, was actually quite a bit. Allow me to demonstrate. We've got Rise of the Tomb Raider running. We're going to run a Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Uh, it's 2560 by 1080 on both the guest and the host. Uh, in uh, NVIDIA, dynamic super resolution is an option. If you want to do that, you can do 4K. Theoretical maximum frame rate is about 300 FPS at 4K with the memory bandwidth of our Intel Core i9. Our setup here is the Gigabyte Aorus X299 Gaming with the 10 core 7900X Intel. We've got 32 gigabytes of G-Skill uh, Trident Z DDR memory. Our host GPU is an R9 390X and our guest GPU is a GTX 1080 Ti. Now I'm running Linux kernel 4.15 with the uh, AMD GPU.DC, uh, the next generation graphics drivers enabled for our R9 390X. We've also tested this with uh, uh, GTX 1060 in the host and Vega in the host and an R9 Fury in the host. Now there is a problem with Vega. Vega's frame rate is not very good for some reason. We're still investigating that. Big thanks to Sapphire and AMD for providing a Vega. Uh, this technology, this program, was written uh, by a Jeff who figured out the NPT bug on Ryzen, same guy. So he and I sort of got together and compared notes and we're looking at stuff. And so this is his project and he showed me some of the early versions of stuff we've been working on it the last few weeks. We had a fundraiser on Level 1 Linux that was massively successful. So again, huge thanks to the Level 1 Linux community. You guys made it rain and uh, that was enough stuff to buy to sort of fill in the gaps and make ends meet in terms of hardware. But also big thanks to Gigabyte. Also big thanks to PLE Computers Australia. They're supplying the parts for this thing that because uh, for Jeff it's local and it's really good. So huge thanks to them. There's a link to them in the description below. Be sure to click that and check them out just so they can see that hey there's a lot of interest in this project. Big thanks. A lot of coverage. A lot of excitement. So the community sort of came together to uh, make this technology happen. And as you can see, the, the latency is actually pretty low. If you look at our high speed footage, you know, typically it's running about one frame behind. Now we've got an experimental version of this that uh, will allow us to grab the frame before the video card has started to display it because it's waiting on the monitor, it's waiting on VSync. And you get into an interesting situation. So for the future, it may be possible for us to grab the frame before it's displayed from the NVIDIA graphics card and then display it on the host graphics card using FreeSync. So yeah, you can have FreeSync on a GTX 1080 Ti, technically. Although you're still gonna get the little bit of latency that you get from the memory to memory copy. Memory to memory copy latency is not really super high. So it could be really exciting by the time we hit beta. But right now, it's just alpha. I don't wanna get you overly excited. 
But this is available on GitHub for you to download and compile and that sort of thing. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. You can't just, you know, RPM install this or DPKG install this. We've tested on uh, Ubuntu, Debian, and Fedora. And uh, you will have to make some changes, some adjustments to the source for your system to actually compile this and do it. Hopefully in a few weeks or a couple of months or something like that, it'll be ready for packaging. There is a full how-to on the level one forum. Uh, it's a wiki. So uh, if you want to set this up, there's sort of a general how-to. This setup has been really tuned to minimize latency. Now, because this is an alpha release, I do want to note that there are some known issues. So don't everybody flood with a zillion bug requests. In fact, uh, yeah, definitely like, let's keep the signal to noise ratio to a minimum. Uh, there are bugs around QEMU's input. So this is a Spice client for those of you that, that know what that means. Um, but KVM and the Spice client, the input mode is like a tablet where the positioning of the cursor is absolute. There are bugs with QEMU and relative input and QEMU has already been notified and they're working on it. Uh, Jeff has, has sort of filed a bug report and that's really good. Uh, the other thing is you're going to need the Red Hat shared memory driver, which can be a little tricky to install. Sometimes it'll cause QEMU to crash when you install it. Again, that's been fixed. We're just waiting on QEMU to catch up. There are patches if you want to manually install it, if you're feeling uh, adventurous. There are some other bugs that have been exposed with um, QEMU, because if you're using a, an emulated PS2 mouse and keyboard, sometimes QEMU will get mixed up about which device is active. So for now, I would recommend still using a separate PS2 mouse and keyboard and passing those through um, separately or a separate USB keyboard and passing those through separately that are physical hardware. That's what I'm doing uh, back here. But because it is a Spice client, once the bugs are fixed in Spice, it should be okay. It's not actually a problem with, with looking glass or anything like that. It's just that nobody uses relative input mouse mode because it doesn't make sense the normal way that you use Spice. So you know, just keep that in mind. There are other known issues that are documented on a level one text forum. So be sure to check that before uh, we get 387 requests about, you know, the mouse not working or something like that with Looking Glass, because it's gonna be a really busy next few weeks. If you wanna support us, hey, you know, Jeff's info is down there at the bottom. Level one text can always use more people on, on Patreon or buying t-shirts or mugs or whatever. So it's an, it's an exciting time. I can't wait to do more projects like this. You know, if you're a crazy person, you could use a KVM to switch between guest and host like I do, but I think this technology is gonna make that obsolete. Although I'm still gonna use the KVM because I've got so many computers, they're not necessarily all in the same box, but it still works really well. If you leave VSync at the defaults on the guest and the host, uh, you can introduce extra latency. But as you can see from our high speed footage, uh, the guest is running only about one frame ahead of the host at around one, at around a refresh of about 60 hertz, give or take, which is mind blowing. It's mind blowing that it's that it's that fast. Now, in terms of capturing the frame from the guest to the host, uh, the NVIDIA Capture API for this is really great. But to be able to use the NVIDIA Capture API, at least for plebs like us, you've got to have an NVIDIA Quadro. So it's a little bit like the Code 43 problem, except there's not exactly a workaround. Um, so if you, if anybody knows anybody at NVIDIA that an NVIDIA would be willing to, you know, sort of look at our use case and open up the capture API for consumer cards, because we know that they have opened up the capture API, um, for some consumer cards, then we are confident that we can make use of the capture API to really, you know, have some extra features and a little bit less latency on NVIDIA uh, guests. As it is right now, we can also use the DirectX Capture API, which is a little slower than, than the NVIDIA Capture API, but it still works really well. So, you know, the DirectX Capture API is definitely an option. So if anybody knows anybody at NVIDIA, and it's like, hey, check out what these nerds are working on. They're not trying to supplant the enterprise income. They're just trying to play games under Linux. We should help them out with that in the drivers and not, you know, do stuff. Please do put in a good word for us, reach out and get in contact. I've sent some emails to some of my contacts. Maybe we can, maybe we can get stuff done because this technology is, you know, super duper exciting. It is so much, it, I just, I'm so excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now seeing this up close and personal has got your interest. The future really honestly only gets brighter. A lot of you may have heard, especially if you've made it this far into the video, you may have heard of a technology called SRIOV. That technology has been in the enterprise. You can take a single graphics card that supports SRIOV 
and run multiple virtual machines that are all attached to that single graphics card. Most SRIOV capable graphics cards don't even have outputs. So if you look at, you know, especially some of the AMD cards that are SRIOV capable, there's, there's no output on the card. So how do you get the output from the card to somewhere that a user can see it? Well, a lot of the time those SRIOV cards are used in virtual desktop infrastructure like you find in a company where people are remoting into a server and running their desktop that way. This technology is the technology that we as consumers would use to run SRIOV. I know that AMD Vega has really great support for SRIOV. A lot of people in the community, myself included, thought that maybe, at least on the Vega Frontier Edition, we would see SRIOV support. It didn't come to pass, but maybe by showing the technology that we have now, we have the technology to copy the frame buffer at high speed and 32 bits and you know full color depth. We're not playing any shenanigans with the color depth or anything like that. It is literally a full frame buffer to frame buffer copy. In the future, it may even be possible to do direct copies through the PCI Express bus. I mean, that's gonna be way, way down the road. We don't have any idea how we would do that. But theoretically, that should be possible to do that, which is, I mean, that is also mind blowing. That is where the technology would go. And then at that point, we can package the entire operating system inside a container. If you have SRIOV support on your host GPU, so you do have some outputs, then you don't even need multiple GPUs. SRIOV would let a guest operating system share the host operating system's single graphics card. And that's why SRIOV is so important. But the other part of the missing equation with SRIOV was how are we gonna get to the frame buffer that's being rendered, rendered on the SRIOV card? And that's how we have the technology. Now there is one wrinkle with this. You still have to have some kind of a monitor hooked to the output, because if you don't have any monitor displayed, at least with the setup that I have, it only goes to 1024 by 768 VGA. Not to worry, we have dummy EDID plugs. You plug this in, this shows up on the guest graphics card like you've got a 4K 60 Hertz monitor. It's got a whole bunch of different display modes. Some of the cheap ones of these only have one or two video modes, which is bad, but this one has everything from 800 by 600 all the way up to 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz. You plug this in and Windows thinks a monitor is attached, but you don't actually have to have a monitor attached. You can get your, your Windows guest in a window. Windows in a window. Windows in a sandbox is more like it. This technology is so exciting. Mad props to Jeff at Host Vision for, for pulling this off. This is mostly his work. I've just been along for the ride and helped with testing and the level one community again has really done a nice job supporting him. There's a link uh, in the description if you wanna learn more about Jeff and support him directly and do all that kind of stuff. And again, big thanks to Sapphire and AMD for providing Vega for us to be able to do stuff with this. Big thanks to Gigabyte for providing Jeff's motherboard. And big thanks to everybody who contributed to the project. Without, without all of us coming together as a community, this would not be possible. And yes, this is very early alpha. Yes, it's rough around the edges. And yes, it's not perfect. But think about how much better we are today than we were yesterday. It is really exciting. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. And you can find me in the Level 1 Text Forums.